With Siyata Deshmaya, we're going to start a brand new series, which is not really a brand new series. The truth is, every single year, the Siyata Deshmaya, between Pesach and Shavuos, we do Perky Yavas. And every year in Yeshiva, I pick a different parak. That's what I've been doing for the last few years. Those of you that have been in my share a few years ago may remember that I was doing, and you remember, we did Perky Yavas. We used to record the Shiurim as well. We've done Perakim in different years. We are now holding Baruch Hashem, Perik Vov, in the sixth Perik in Perky Yavas. So some of the Olam, just to start, ask me, what is this Indian of learning Perky Yavas now? Like what was happens now after Pesach learning Perky Yavas? So we know that Avada, that uh, Perky Yavas is known to be the Sefer Hamidus. It's called Sefer Hamidus in one of the names. The reason why that is so or in English, they call it the ethics of our fathers. Why do they call it that way? Because inside Perky Ovis, there's a tremendous amount of character traits. There's a tremendous amount of minutes that are discussed, which, by the way, are not discussed almost anywhere else. Almost anywhere else you will not find, there's no, nowhere in Chazal that you're going to find a collection like there is in Perky Ovis of such a tremendous amount of character traits that we have. Now, we know that between Pesach and Shavuos is the time that we work on ourselves. We work on our character, we work on our inner feelings, we work on ourselves in a tremendous way. That's why there's a specific time that was given. That's why many shuls on Shabbos afternoon, they say Perky Ovis, one parak every single week. And that's why Perky Ovis is specifically the time because it discusses Midas and Derech Eretz Kodma La Torah, as I state in Chazal, that Derech Eretz comes before the Torah. So before Kabbalah, I told you, before Shavuos, we're going to make sure that we're Oisik in what? In Midas Tovus. We're going to be Oisik in a character traits. Now it happens to be that in all the previous parochim, there's so much to discuss. Every, every Mishnah, we can, we can go on a tangent to so many different things, and I'm sure we will over here also. But Perik Vav is Miyuchad, that it talks specifically about Torah. Uh, it's called the Perik of Kenyan Torah, because it's got the Memches. It's got the 48 ways of the ways to acquire the Torah inside them. But all the Mishnayas in Perik Vav are so involved with how to acquire Torah and what Torah does to you, which I think is so gewaldic that we're learning this now, of course, before Shavuos, before we get to Kabbalah Satoru. That is a very important thing to remember. Also, do remember what the Gemara tells us in Baba Kama Daf Lamed. The Gemara tells us in Baba Kama Daf Lamed, Omer Reb Yehuda, Haiman de Boi Lemeh Chasida, Lekai Mili De Ovas. The Gemara tells us, B'Shem Reb Yehuda, if you want to be a Chosid, a Chosid always is described as someone that goes, the Fnim Mishur as he goes beyond what is necessary. Learn Ovas. As I state the Gemara in Baba Kama, B'Shem Reb Yehuda. So that's what we're doing over here. We're learning Ovas. With that in mind, that number one, we're learning the Kinyon because that's Perik Vov, that's what this year we're up to. And specifically of us is, as we said, the Sefer HaMidois, which is very, very important to learn between Pesach and Shuras, where we become a human being, and the carbon that was offered on Pesach was an animal food carbon, and the carbon that's offered on Shuras is a human being carbon food, and therefore because of that, we, it shows us that between Pesach and Shavuos, we go on the journey to become a real human being, which is the journey of Perky Yavis. So we're just going to do a little bit of an introduction just for today, and then as I'll show you tomorrow, we're going to jump right in. But I want to start, first of all, Rabbi Vadi Yosef brings in his Sefer Anaf Eitz Ovois from the Chidah, in his Sefer Maris Ayin, that says Rabbeinu HaKadosh actually, when he wrote Perky Yavis, surprisingly enough, only had five parochim. When Rabbeinu HaKadosh wrote Perky Yavis, there was only five parochim inside that. If you look, and he quotes the Rambam and the Batanura as well, also only explain the first five parochim in Perky Yavis. And he brings from others as well, Rabbi Yosef Chavin as well, that he says that what happened over here is, is that the minig was that they say in Shul, as we mentioned, between Pesach and Shavuos, one perek per Shabbos, and therefore there was obviously one Shabbos left without a perek, and therefore the Kadmonim came along, and they put together from all the Mamori Chazal about the Milas of Torah, which was said the Shabbos before Shavuos, and because obviously that's the Shabbos when they, right before they were coupled the Torah, and then later that's the reason what happened. So it's interesting how the sixth perek in Perky Ovis is not really regular Rabbeinu HaKadosh's Rebbe's um, um, Pirkei Ovis, but it's kind of, you know, a collection of uh, Mamori Chazal from the Kadmonim, of course, about the Milas of Torah, which is, of course, very, very important. Now, this Mishnah actually starts with something very interesting. Before you even start Mishnah Aleph, before, um, Mishnah Aleph in the Perek, it starts as follows. Before you get to Mishnah Aleph, uh, like a Hagdama, Shonu Chachomim, 
Chazal tell us, our rabbis teach us, Beloshana Mishnah, in the Loshan of the Mishnah, Boruch Shebocha Bohem U Vemishnosom. Hakodesh Boruch, he, blessed is Hakodesh Boruch who chose them and their teachings. Now, why is this Hakdom over here? So, before you even get to Mishnah Aleph, we're basically saying we're blessing the Rabbi Nishaloylam for who chose them and everything they taught. What is the Pshat in this Hagdama over here before we start Mishnah Aleph? So maybe you could say Hagdama would be like this. We'll start the other way around. The validity of a secular knowledge is very independent of the one that discovers it. Okay, or the one that invented it, or the author that wrote it. So for example, the law of, gra- of gravity is a wonderful law. We don't care about the one Newton that discovered it or taught it or whatever it was. It doesn't make a difference. A scientific finding has its own merit, can stand on its own. I don't need to decide whether the guy that decided that gravity is real is real. I don't care if he's real or not because I can see gravity is real. Scientific discoveries at the end of the day have their own mahalach and they stand on their own. Okay, I don't have to decide if Fleming, who made penicillin, is a real good person or not, because it's irrelevant. Why? Because penicillin helps people and it heals people. So in the secular world, it's irrelevant who wrote the book or who made the idea or invented whatever it was, because the idea stands on its own. Torah is completely different. Torah is completely different in the sense that, it's re- it, 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 in other words, it's regardless how valuable a specific teaching of Torah is, if the author who said that teaching is not acceptable, we will not accept that Torah. We will not accept that Torah. It doesn't make a difference. Because at the end of the day, the purest water will be contaminated if you put it through a dirty container. And therefore the container that spills out the Torah is also Hoshev, unlike any other thing in the world. Somebody told me just not long ago about a specific person who gives um, lectures on uh, Shmir Senaim, Shmir Sebris, and he said he watched the same person was busy chatting, talking, flirting, getting numbers of all the little girls and women around. He said to me, that doesn't make any sense. So I said, don't learn from him. Don't learn from him. I told him, listen, everyone's a human being and everybody slips up. That's okay. Right? That's, uh, that's fine. Right? Will you find someone giving a Shmir Saloshan shit? Does that mean he never speaks Lashon? No, no, he's a human being. That's okay. But if someone is Oisik in that, then there's something wrong with what he's teaching. And even if he's saying wonderful things, it doesn't really work. And therefore, it's very, very important. And that's what the Mishnah here is telling us. Right before we start, all the Mishnahis and the Perik on Kabbalah Sat Torah and the Milas of Torah understand one thing. Who's teaching that Torah makes a very, very big difference. It's very important for the teacher that's teaching the Torah to meet a certain refinement criteria in order that the Torah, the teaching that he's giving, is something that's worthwhile. That's Pshat in this Shonu Chacham and Veloshan Mishnah, Boruch Shabbacha Bohem over Mishnasam. We thank and we bless the Rabboni Shnana for teaching, for choosing them and everything they taught. We'll just start with one tiny piece because it's a huge Mishnah and there's a lot to discuss. Rebbe Oimer, Mishnah Aleph. Rebbe Oimer, Kala Oisik Batoyu Lishma, Zoycha Ledvarim Harbe. We'll see, there's a lot more to discuss. But one thing Rebbe, Rebbe Meir says over here is, Okay, Stam Rameh Rameh Balanes, Kala Oisik Vatoyra Lishma. Anyone that learns Torah Lishma is Zoycha Ledvarim Harbe. Ledvarim Harbe. So, first of all, before we understand that, what does it mean, Lishma? How do you understand Lishma? What does it mean to learn Lishma? Right? What does it mean? So, there's different Mahalchim and the Rishonim and the Achronim of what means Lishma. The Rambam and the Shla Kadosh means. I am simply learning Torah to implement what the laws are. In other words, Talmud Mevri De Maisek Mon Kedushin Daf Memo Merbeis. That means I'm learning Torah to keep the Torah, to enable myself to keep the halachos, which I couldn't do if I didn't learn the Torah. If I don't learn the Torah, I don't know what to do. That's a very simple thing. That's how the Rambam and the Shlonan. If you look at the Shulchan Aruch Harav in the Tanya, that he that he learns a different mahalach. The Tanya holds very simply, a person is learning Torah, why? To attach himself to the Rabbi Nishram, to the Creator itself. That's why I'm learning Torah, that's Lishma. Lishma, according to the Tanya, according to the Balatanya, means I'm learning to connect myself to the Rabbi Nishalayim in that case. Rabbi Chaim Velazhen understands Lishma means I want to understand everything the Torah has to teach and all the contents over there. The Kotzka says, the Kotzka says, what's Pshat and Lishma? 
What does it mean? So the Kotzka says, don't learn Lishma literally, right? Lishma means for its own sake. Then said the Kotzka, no, but for its name, Lishma Lashon Shame, right? Lashon Shame, its name, which means that Torah is meant to be a guide. Torah is meant to be a guide and the only guide through life. That's what the Kotzka says. It means to learn Lishma in that case. It's very, very important for a person to learn Lishma in that case. Um, so why is Torah different? This is the question. Why is Torah different to any other subject that it needs to be learned in Shema? Well, why, why, why? Torah has to be learned in Shema. We need a whole Mishnah to tell us. Why is it different? Why can't it be good if I'm doing it for some other motive? Why does it have to be Lishma? So Nefesh Chaim says that if a, Chaim Belajan says that if a person learns Torah only for the sake of what was something specific, then he's only going to learn the portions that are negated to what he's trying to do. So for example, if a person's only turned to learn Torah in order to learn what to do, he's only going to learn the practical parts of Torah. He's not going to learn the other parts because I don't need to know that. And therefore there's no point. As the Nefesh Chaim, Torah in its entirety, in its whole, is so beautiful, it's so great, and therefore we have to make sure that we learn Seder Kodshim, even though we don't, unfortunately, have a base Amigdash. And we learn Taharis, even though Lamaisa, we don't observe Tum of Atara, unfortunately, at this moment of time, and all in Yoni Korbanus, and the base Amigdash, which is important. When a person learns Torah Lishma, he's learning Torah because I want to learn the Torah. I understand that I want to get the, 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 the depth of this Torah, to understand what's going on beneath the surface. And therefore, I don't care what it is that I learn. I want to learn the Rabbi Shalom's Torah. We've said, I've said this many times, that if you want to study someone, right, you learn his books, right? Imagine, for example, if I tell you about a certain professor, or I tell you about a certain inventor, and I tell you about it, and you'll be like, okay, very nice. Yeah, but he invented this, this, this. Okay, very nice. But imagine if you spent six months reading every single thing he invented, everything he ever did. You'd have a greater appreciation of him. If you want to have a great appreciation of the Rabbi Shalom, you have to learn his Torah. Because he wrote the Torah as a way of understanding, trying to understand some level of what he is and who he is, as the Tanya brings down as well. And just to finish off what we said, Zoychel Advarim Harbe, what does it mean, Zoychel Advarim Harbe? It's the Medrash Shmuel explains um, what does it mean, Kala Oseb Atol that, that's actually for the next one. We'll do that for the next one. But that, that's what we're saying. Zoycha ledvarim harbe can be zoycha to many, many, many things, which is very important to realize. In fact, some Seifer says, dvarim over here, we translate it as, as things. You give zoycha to many things, which are the continuation of the mission is. But the some Seifer says, you translate it as words. That means that the Talmud Chocham that learns Torah Lishma means his words will be meaningful, they'll be said, they'll be understood, they'll be accepted. We both said this is a huge Mishnah, ton for the sky. Us. Be'ez Hashem, join us tomorrow for more. Shkoyach. Before we should make it right.